Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm pumped to talk about something you have been asking for, which is how the factory design pattern works in real world applications. This video is not just theory, so we are going to bring it to life in a scenario you will recognize, online shopping. So stick around and by the end you will see why the factory pattern is more than just a fancy code. This pattern is a lifesaver in a complex real world applications. In the real life scenario, we have a custom customizable products in an e-commerce. So let's say you are building an e-commerce site for a client who sells laptops, cameras, and smartphones. Now, each of these product types have unique attributes. Laptops, for example, have a RAM, processors, and storage options. Smartphones comes with screen sizes, battery lives, and operating systems. For cameras, include megapixels, lens compatibility, and sensor type. With these specific needs, we want to build a scalable, flexible structure that's ready to adapt if the client expands to a new product type later. That's where we enter the factory design pattern. So why not just map a single product component then? That is a great question. Why not just create a product component and map over it? Well. Let's imagine your client adds drones, tablets, or gaming consoles to the site. Each type has new, unique properties. So if you use a single product component, you will soon end up with a massive component filled with conditional checks. Think like if statements all over the place. It will get very messy and hard to maintain very quickly. But with the factory pattern, we can cleanly add new product types without rewriting everything. So how we will do this? We will have a folder structure. We will create several components and each component will be a specific and then we will have this product factory which will use a design pattern. So we will have a product component which will be our base product component and then we will have laptop, smartphone and camera components which will be with their unique features. And then we will have a product factory .ts, which will be our factory function that creates components for us. Now, why this setup? By keeping each product on its own file, we are ensuring that adding a new product type in the future won't clutter existing code. This approach makes our project organized and scalable as well. So the first step, we want to start with a base product component and we will create a product component that will hold the basic info for each product. For example, all products will have a name, price and description. So let's go to our components. I will create inside my components folder. I'll create a new file and I will call it product.tsx. Okay. And here, I'll just create a functional component, which I'll call it product. And this product will accept an interface as I'm using TypeScript. So I'll create an interface for the properties it does expect. And it will expect a name, which type of string, price, type of number, and description, which is type of string. Okay, now inside here, my comments definition, I have to define the type as well. Again, if you're using JavaScript, you don't need to add all these types, but we are using TypeScript here, so I have to define the type. So my product, I have to tell that is going to be a React functional component. So I can do react.fc, okay? And then I can tell what is the type of the properties is expect. So I defined the type up there, so I'll just add it here, product props. Then inside here, I have to list, of course, the properties we're expecting. So all of them are mandatory. So name, price, and description. Okay, so that's the defin definition of our component. Now we will go into the render of the UI, and that will be a simple div. And we'll have, for example, an H2, which will be rendering for us the name property and then we will have for example a p tag with the price which will display for us the price of the product and let's have another p tag which will display the description and we can just let's display the description here from the property 
So this component is very generic, right? And will serve as a base for our specific product types. But we don't stop here. We are about to make each product shine with its own features. And that's take us to step number two. So we will build a specialized component for each product type. So each product has a different attribute that our base product can't cover alone. And here is we're creating specialized components like laptop components, smartphone components, and camera components that extend our base product components with the unique details. And let's start creating them one by one. So first thing, I want to create a laptop component. So I'll come here, create a new file, product, tsx okay and of course i will just initialize my component and i will keep it laptop as well and i will import the product component i created earlier as well now we said our laptop component will display for us for example the basic details which is the title and description and the price and that we will use this product component and then we will add some extra information for example the ram and the processor details for now i'm going to hard code them but in real time scenarios they'll be coming from some data or some other. okay so that is our laptop component so basically this component needs this product because we need to display, as I said, the name, the price and description, plus some extra information. And same thing also we will do with the other component, which is smartphone. So I'll create a new component, we'll call it smartphone.tsx. And let's initialize our component and we will keep it to smartphone. And again, we'll do the same thing. We will import our product, we'll do that right here. And same thing we'll do with the third component, which is our camera component. So we're going to define a new component. I'll call it camera.tsx. Some extra details here as well. Like for example, how many megapixels it have, what is the sensor type and so on. Now, so each component now has a unique properties that helps customers decide on their purchase. Without the factory pattern, adding this properties in one big product component will get really chaotic. That throw us to the step number four, we will be creating the product factory function. And now here is where the factory pattern does it, it's magic. The factory function will take in product type and return the correct component based on that type. Okay, so how that will look like, let's first create a new component. I will do our import all those components I created. We import all our um, custom components. Now we'll create our factory. So I'll create a function, uh, call it product factory. And that will be equal and to accept a property with um, a type. We'll call it type and that will be of type string. And that will give us back something. So what we will do, we'll use the switch uh, case and that will be checking for us the type in the property and we'll make it to lowercase. So we don't make it a case sensitive. So if someone do a mistake and for example, use a capital letter or something in some type, it should still work. So we'll make it to lowercase and then we will compare. And here it shines. We will use the cases, okay? And depending on that case type, we will be returning the component, which is basically just JavaScript. So our factory here, what it does for us, it check the type. For example, if it's laptop, we attend, okay, render for us a component laptop. If it's type of smartphone, then of course I give us a smartphone component. And if it is type of camera, give me back the camera component. And if any of these types doesn't exist or is not handled, then we are just giving a default return here and it can be anything depending on your requirements. So by letting the factory choose the component, our main page will remain clean and readable. And if we add any products, new products in the future, we only need to update this factory function. 
And this draw us now to the step number five. We will be displaying the products on the main page. So all what we have to do, we go to the main page, for example, your home page or any page is your main page. In our, for me now, it will be the page of TSX. And what I will do, I will just hard code an array of types. And then what I will just import our factory now. And I think I forgot to export it. So I'll export my product factory here and I'll export it as default. So I should make my factory available to my application. And we go back to our main function. And what I will do now, all what I have to do is just map through my array and trigger my um, my product factory. Simple as that. And that should work as expected. We can go and run our app. So I'll say npm run dev because I'm using Next.js. As we run this in our browser, you can see we got the list of the items. So all we are sharing their base details in all of them. Then we are adding extra details on top of each depending on their type. And this using this product factory will keep our page always adaptable. If new products are added, product factory will handle it without us changing the main page code. Even in future, if you want to remove some existing products, that will be easy too. This lets our app grow without a ton of refactoring. So why the factory patterns works here? First thing, the unique properties for each product, like with laptop, cameras, and smartphones, each having unique specs. The factory patterns keep our code clean and prevent bloating one component with irrelevant data. The second, it's easier to maintain. When we add a new product, we just add its components and update product factory. No big refactor required. Then the third, better user experience. Each product type has features that make sense to the user, making our app more initiative. So this factory pattern isn't just an academic exercise. It is a real solution to handle dynamic components based on complex requirements. Now we have got on an app that scales smoothly and handles unique product specs beautifully. So thanks for tuning in. I hope this example showed why the factory pattern is useful, especially for apps with diverse products or services. Drop a comment if you'd like to see more patterns like this in action and hit subscribe to keep leveling up your coding skills with real world examples. Until next time, keep coding and stay curious.